Don't sign that real estate development deal without watching this entire video because I'm going to show you six clauses you can insert in your next real estate development deal to protect you. And if you want out of that deal, I'll show you how to make sure you have that option. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to create a thousand millionaires through real estate investing. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. Having clauses that are specific to development in your real estate offer are key for both you as a buyer and the seller. These clauses provide protection by outlining the obligations of both parties. Development deals are very different from a standard real estate transaction where you generally don't get as much cooperation from the seller side. So take advantage of that and don't be afraid to ask for what you want. Being clear on your needs will also help you ensure a smooth sale process and minimize any potential losses down the line. Here are six clauses you may want to include. Now, check with your lawyer or your real estate agent if you're working with one to see what other clauses they may want to insert. Number one, a basic due diligence clause. Having a due diligence clause in your real estate offer is essential. This clause allows you to investigate all aspects of the property by doing any and all of the following inspections. Building inspections, fire inspections, health inspections, electrical safety inspections, and an environmental inspection. If you're not happy with the findings, you have the option to void the agreement and get your deposit returned without interest or deductions. There should also be some wording about the seller providing full cooperation to allow you to complete your due diligence. Number two, a development due diligence clause. This clause gives you time to investigate all aspects of the development, such as the financing and the economic viability. This clause also gives you the opportunity to ensure that the development is feasible and will meet your expectations before signing off on a binding legal agreement. It also serves as a protection in case you find any unexpected issues or discrepancies during your investigation. As an FYI, the investigation period begins when the agreement is accepted and can be negotiated based on your needs. A period of 30 days or longer is not out of the ordinary on a development deal. Number three, a vacant possession clause. Having a clause that provides vacant possession in your real estate offer is essential if you're looking to make any changes to an existing property. This clause outlines the responsibilities of the seller if they fail to deliver up vacant possession due to a tenant refusing or failing to vacate prior to closing date. You can also introduce a penalty if the seller does not provide vacant possession. An example would be that the seller must pay a prorated fee of $10,000 per month to the buyer until a revised closing date can be arranged. In addition, all costs associated with the delay in the closing would be the responsibility of the seller. By including this clause in your offer, you're ensuring that you'll get full possession of the property on your desired date and that any tenant related issues won't cost you any additional time or money. Before we get to the final three clauses, I wanted to let you know about my new development workshop. This is a full day training with me on how you can take on your first or your next development deal. It's only $95 for a full day of training when you use the promo code YouTube 100 for a limited time. Click on the link in the description below to get registered. Number four, application for building permits. Including a clause in your real estate offer that grants you consent to make any and all applications to the appropriate municipality or government authority is essential in a development deal. This includes viewing and copying building plans, drawings, and files, as well as executing any necessary documents to assist you in such matters. It's important to note that you as the buyer can apply for permits on the seller's behalf, but you do so without any expense to the seller. This clause can be beneficial as it can expedite the time that it takes to get you through the permit process by using up the time it takes to close the property to your advantage. Number five, an assignment clause. This clause allows you to sign or transfer your interest in the property to another party, typically another investor, without the need for additional approval by the seller. Number six, a financing clause. This clause outlines the terms of the financing that must be met in order for the sale to be completed, including any necessary deposits or down payments or other important requirements. Keeping this clause as general as possible provides maximum flexibility if you decide you need to back out of the deal. I like to use the words at the buyer's sole discretion. This doesn't leave any room for a seller to come back and debate you on whether or not you were able to get satisfactory financing, which is often how it's worded in a standard contract. As a real estate developer, you have to make sure that you have the right clauses inserted into your deals. Otherwise, you could find yourself losing out on a hugely valuable asset or on the hook for a costly mistake. While these examples may not fit every deal, they're good foundational clauses to include in your future contracts and agreements. If you've got questions about clauses you should include in your development deals or anything else real estate investing related, leave those in the comments section below. If you want a copy of my free ebook, click on the link in the description below or it's available on my website at darrenvoros.com. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.